And it's time now for our monthly uh, Missouri Orthopedic uh, segment. And joining us now, Dr. Daniel Slosky. We're going to talk all the bendy things in your, in your body, uh, most of which are actually designed to bend in particular directions, and some of them are, well, less than cooperative right about now. Uh, this, your specialty is ankles and, and wrists. We've, we've talked with you before, but uh, let's, uh, let's dive right into it. Uh, on, the base, on the basketball side of things, uh, Washington Wizards' John Wall already had foot surgery, ruptures his Achilles tendon now, there are differing degrees. Kobe Bryant a couple of years ago had a complete and full tear, while John's report was, well, there were a few, quote, strands remaining attached. As a surgeon, what's preferable? A full, complete blowout or, gee, you got a couple of threads remaining in the sweater? Uh, functionally, they're uh, really about the same. Uh, the, okay. Even if you do have a, a, a few of the, the fibers left, mm-hmm. if there's greater than 50 or 60% of the, the fibers torn, the integrity of the tendon is, is pretty much shot. In which case, especially in an elite athlete, uh, you need to think about surgical correction. Well, and, and they're already doing that. He had just had foot surgery and he had the foot in a walking boot and he said he didn't even feel the pop or, or anything. He just went in for an exam and, uh, and they noticed it. What's what's that procedure like? Uh, you know, you, you come in, you you do the diagnosis. What's that entire from start to to finish like for an athlete with an Achilles injury? Uh, Achilles tears are, are are pretty devastating injuries, and uh, from an athlete's point of view, it's not just the initial injury, but then the rehab afterwards. Uh, the repair itself can be done in any one of a number of, of couple ways. There's a full open procedure where you open the skin reattach the, the two points. Sometimes you have to augment the tissue with grafts. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times when you have a tear, there's already disease in the tendon. And so it's a process that over time it's been failing. And then you have one episode that you get the catastrophic tear. And so oftentimes when you get in there and you look at the tendon, you don't really have really good tissue to work with, even in, in very good athletes. And in fact, oftentimes they have the worst tissue to work with because over a number of years they've been having the, the deterioration of the tendon. Sometimes we have to use grafts. Other times you can just do a straight end-to-end repair. But again, it depends on the, 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 the severity. Afterwards, um, the old uh, st- style of uh, rehab was placing somebody in a cast, uh, usually for six to eight weeks after the surgery. Uh, most people have gone away from that, realizing that we need to mobilize the tendon. If you have a good integrity repair, you want to get it moving pretty quickly. Okay. The tissue actually heals better if it's moving and has some weight uh, placed on it. The recovery time can be anywhere from three to six months uh, afterwards, and sometimes a little bit longer if it's a more extensive repair or reconstruction. How much of treating the Achilles and, and the, the process of that did we learn from treating an ACL tear? Um, there's, there are some things which are um, the same. Uh, there are some things which are quite different. In ACL reconstructions, um, we are really reconstructing the, the ligament. Mm-hmm. Once it's torn, we're not putting the, the native ligament back together. With the Achilles, we're actually trying to salvage and repair the tendon itself and keeping, uh, keeping it in. So in the, an, an anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction, we're making a new one, whereas we're trying to repair and augment the, uh, the Achilles tendon. Which is the difference between a ligament and a tendon. Correct. One, one you can okay. fix and one you have to basically replace the rubber band out there uh, in, in the body. So, okay, um, that's, a, that's an Achilles. And, and you mentioned that athletes tend to have more degradation in the tissue surrounding that. Is that just because of the mileage? Essentially? Yes. Um, part of its mileage, part of its age. Um, we'll see uh, Achilles tendon ruptures tend to be in an older population of athletes, late 20s, 30s, although I've repaired them in high school students that have ruptured their Achilles. So there, there's not an absolute age range, but as you get a little bit older, part of the, uh, the blood flow to the tendon begins to deteriorate. You begin to have more wear on it mm-hmm. and then causing the rupture. I, you can't prevent everything with preventative maintenance for something like ankles when you've got a high school athlete or, or going into college or even younger as you're as you're starting to get serious about sports what can you do for for achilles ankles those kinds of things what what are your best bets as an athlete to, to get stronger and better there particularly with ankles we do have some pretty good options compared to some of our other joints uh, the first is a, a good strengthening program and there are some very good athletic training programs uh, with ankle proprioception training, and that's uh, basically balance and being able to control the joint as well as strengthening of the protective muscles. Um, There have been several studies which have shown that those can significantly reduce uh, in-season injuries particularly. 
The second round is with bracing, and uh, bracing around the ankle is one of our success stories. Um, use, utilizing an ankle brace, either a, a lace-up or stirrup type, has been shown to reduce uh, the frequency of injuries, although not necessarily the severity of injuries. And the University of Wisconsin a few years ago did a very good match study where they had high school students that either did have ankle braces or did not have ankle braces. They followed them through the season, uh, uh, well over 1,000 students. And what they found, there was a definite decrease in the number of injuries on the kids who were using ankle braces. And then finally is taping, although, again, with taping, in combination with bracing is probably most effective because the tape will actually loosen with time. And so if you look at after about 15, 20 minutes of play, you do lose a significant amount of your support with taping where you can tighten and, and readjust your brace or you can't necessarily do that with the taping. Dr. Slosky with us here at Missouri Orthopedic Institute as our monthly segment. We're talking ankles, and, and uh, we'll get into risks here in, in a little bit as if we have some time. But but ankles seem, and, and you kind of mentioned it during the, the break, uh, this is about the time you start seeing a lot of ankle injuries, in, in, especially in basketball players. Why is that now as opposed to the first part of the season when they're, everybody's getting up to, as coaches call it, game speed? And uh, you will see a little bit of a peak early mm-hmm. in the season uh, when you start having athletes just start to get back in with more aggressive training. But now as you're getting into the heart of the season, um, uh, you're getting more aggressive play. You're getting a little bit more of a, uh, a, a competitive push, not that you don't necessarily get that in the early season, but especially as you're getting towards late season and playoffs. And you'll often see that is you get more mileage on the on the ankle as you go through. Mm-hmm. And just the, the more times that uh, you are stressing it, the greater the, the possibility of an injury. Well, we see a lot of injuries when the, the opponent's foot gets in the way. Then you you come down on it, whether it's after a jump shot or a rebound or on a cut, the, the other foot finds a way underneath that ankle. It, more more damaging is it that type of an ankle injury or is it the one where you make that jump cut and you try to roll and you just you can watch on TV you just see that ankle just just go silly putty on you the the more damaging ones are, are the what we call the high ankle sprains and the the uh, scientific name for that is a syndesmotic sprain which means it involves the ligament that connects the two bones of the lower leg above the ankle joint the classic ankle sprain is what is often called an anterior lateral. It's a little bit lower in the ankle okay. joint. Those are when you roll your ankle. The high ankle sprains or the syndesmotic injuries are when your foot gets twisted to the outside for the most part. It's when you come down and land generally on somebody's foot, twist and turn. And those can be much more severe uh, and oftentimes can involve fractures in addition to just the tears of the ligaments. Uh, oftentimes those can require surgery if it's a complete rupture of the ligaments to stabilize the bones. There was a study that actually came out of football that um, got everyone's attention with this about 40, 45 years ago that came out of St. Louis and the group that took care of the old football Cardinals when they were in town. And they began studying ankle injuries in the NFL teams. And what they found is that athletes that had high ankle sprains missed twice as many games and practices as on standard tears. And that when we began treating those much more aggressively. Mm-hmm. How do you make the, the – the, there's the differentiation, but how long does it take to, to make that differentiation between you know, the, the low ankle sprain and – because they both tend to swell up like balloons, but the low ankle sprain and then the high ankle? And usually on the initial physical examination, you can make the, uh, the diagnosis okay. pretty, uh, pretty easily. Where, where do ankle injuries normally fall for athletes on the pain scale? I mean, a lot of times you know right away the Achilles, obviously, you, you kind of – <clears throat> the the act of walking becomes an issue, so you know. <laughs> but but for some of those like the high ankle sprains and things, if they're if they're a little more insidious, if they're a little more kind of internal and maybe not all the way, is there pain that comes through, or or can it be lingering and cause bigger problems if it goes untreated? Yep. With the initial injury, obviously, there's uh, usually going to be a lot more pain from the the damage, but especially with the syndesmotic injuries, there can be some kind of a grumbling pain and a little bit of, of instability of the ankle. And those can cause some long-term problems. Uh, if you have a chronically unstable ankle, uh, that can lead to early arthritic changes, damage to the joint, and other injuries around the ankle joint. Dr. Slosky with us here at Missouri Orthopedic Institute. Okay, so with, with ankles, I know we've We've talked with uh, a couple of other physicians, uh, and Dr. Richard Miles, one of them, about ACLs. And you can kind of look at where, you know the jump test. They jump up in the air, they come back down, and if the knees walk in, they, you're like, okay, we got to watch this one. Is there a similar type of test for ankles that you can look at and you go, 
just because of the way they land on a jump, they are more prone to injury. Yes, you, you do have some of the same uh, risk factors okay. uh, for ankle injuries you do with uh, knees. And there is a statistical correlation between ankle injuries and knee injuries that you can see that in some of the same population uh, groups. Um, and that's where the, the uh, working with strengthening on landing, mm-hmm. working on the lower leg muscles as well as the quads and the hamstrings are actually part of the ankle rehab as well as uh, the, the preventive exercises for uh, ACL injuries. Okay, I'm going to circle back to something that you said earlier, and that was, and it was a response to Jay's question about, you know, what can you do preventatively wise? And you talked about exercises and strengthening the ankle. So as a physician on the preventative side of things, what are some of those exercises that, that athletes can do or, or parents can monitor their student athlete on and make sure that they're getting the best preventative care that they can get? Uh, particularly the exercises are ones working with the internal and external rotation of the foot as well as plantar flexion, and that's pushing down and pulling up. The main protective uh, muscles, especially on the outside part of the ankle, are called the perineals, and those are the ones that run in back of that little bump you have on the outside of your ankle. Mm -hmm. By working in different positions uh, with bands or even uh, against resistance and isometrics, you can help to strengthen those muscles. Also working on balancing with the muscles on the inside of the of the ankle. And athletic trainers are, are very well equipped to instruct the student athletes mm-hmm. with those. Okay. It, in, uh, so that's that's the ankle injury. Typical time frame. Uh, the high ankle sprain we've, we've heard, and I think you may, you may have actually talked about this the last time, uh, you're better off getting the surgery because it, it might as well be considered a broken lower leg and, and going from that standpoint. But a array of I guess, a regular ankle twist. You come down, you roll the ankle, and you kind of hobble off to the sideline, and, and you get all taped up. The trainer looks at you, a little bit of mud, and get you back on in there. What's what's the time frame of recovery, and how does what's the best method for, for caring for that? And it really depends on the grade of the tear. Okay. Um, everything in medicine, for the most part, you want to have a low number. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you have a, a it's great, like golf. <laughs> that's right. That's why you guys uh, golf all the time, right? You're used to low numbers? Uh, just practice. Oh, okay. Just practice. <laughs> And uh, you have a, a, a grade one tear is okay. when you tear some of the fibers. Uh, those are the ones when you twist your ankle and you kind of hobble off, you get some bruising and swelling, but you can be back in a couple of days okay. uh, if, as long as you can control it. A grade two tear is when you tear about half of the, of the ligament stability. On a physical examination, we can test a little bit of laxity, but there's still a good end point, which means the majority of the, the ligament is still there and is still functioning. And then a grade three is when you have a complete rupture. Um, the return to play and the time is really dependent on the amount of instability that we can see. So that on the uh, the light grade ones, uh, it's not out of the question with some taping uh, in uh, in between uh, periods. You could even be back in and play on that as long as you're not having significant uh, discomfort or swelling. Uh, up to a, a severe grade three, which many of those require a, acute repairs or delayed repairs in the ligaments. For the most part, however, it's a matter of immobilization and protection. In the initial phase, you want to get icing and compression and then treat it with a support, either with a light ankle brace or for grade three tears, something like a walking boot. Um, again, a few years ago, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago, there were still a few people casting severe ones. Well, there's really not much of a role for that anymore. We want to have right. some protected motion, but with walking and protecting the ligaments while they begin to heal. Vast majority of those, even grade threes, can be treated non-operatively. Yeah, a lot of times we see during the football season and occasionally during the basketball season, we see those stylish walking boots around camps. You guys buy those by the gross? Is that how y'all get uh, almost a hold of them? the truckload <laughs> at this time of the year? So. Do they come in different styles? Because yeah. I see some of the ladies walking, they have the clunky back black uh, walking boot. And it I, just, I usually tell everybody you can have every color you want ex- uh, as long as it's this black. Is black, because okay. that's all they come in. Okay. You, and, you gray, and Henry Ford. But, uh, okay, great. <laughs> I, um, I want to move over to the wrist just a little bit here as we get ready to wrap this up. Uh, you don't see a lot of wrist injuries. In, especially in basketball, you see them more in, in football just because of the, the blocking and, and the way things happen, the way you would land. But in basketball, uh, occasionally we'll see a, a, an athlete with the wrist taped up. What's the most common 
injury for that wrist and and how do you is it the same type of loosening and strengthening exercise that you can get for the ankle um yes and uh, uh, the grip strengthening exercises mm-hmm. particularly will work with again protecting that um, a little bit more of a chance of fractures in the wrist area and one that we are always concerned about especially somebody landing on an outstretched wrist is a small bone it's called the scaphoid which is below the thumb particularly dangerous fracture because oftentimes it looks like just a sprain or an injury to the ligaments but in fact there can be a small tear which doesn't always show up initially on x-rays. So a, a nagging pain below the base of the thumb, we usually follow those pretty closely, and, and an MRI is usually the best route to go in that if it continues, and the, and the x-rays are normal. Okay, and and one other injury that I have, I've seen in the past, and, and we, we used to call it skier's thumb, mm-hmm. and, and that a lot of times, especially on football, you'll, because they land in a weird fashion, because uh, that'll pop that, that mm-hmm. tendon in that whole area. For, for you... Is that something that you see frequently uh, on the athletic field? Those are pretty common, yeah. um, and it's due to a tear of a ligament mm-hmm. that's at the base of the thumb. And in some cases, you can actually have a fracture. And it's one of the cases that if you do have a fracture and it's not very displaced, it's actually better than having a complete tear of the ligament. Oftentimes, if those are unstable, about 90% of the time they require surgery. If the ligament's completely avulsed, there's a little tendon that's in the area that the ligament tends to flip on the wrong side of when it tears, and it keeps it from healing. If it's a bony fracture and instead of the tear of the ligament, those will usually stay in place, and unless it's a, an extremely large piece or it's displaced, very often we can treat those casted. If they're not a complete tear of the ligament, they can also be treated uh, just with casting. But the grossly unstable ligaments generally will need surgery. Okay. So the takeaway for both the uh, those those bendable items, and remember the uh, both of them have, are, are jam-packed with bon- uh, bones, especially the wrist area, but uh, make sure you loosen up, right? Strengthening exercises, and and for somebody who is off a student athlete, they're coming home to mom after a basketball game, and they're ah, what's what are some of the key things that a, a parent needs to be aware of with their kid, whether it's a wrist or an ankle? Uh, swelling generally right after the injury is a good indication. Mm-hmm. Most of the uh, more severe injuries are going to be associated with more significant pain and swelling. Uh, particularly if you have a lot of bruising around the ankle area, it's a good idea to have that checked out rather than uh, just icing and elevating it on your own. All righty, Dr. Daniel Slosky, Missouri Orthopedic Institute. The Closers on News Talk 1240 KLIK and News Talk 1400 KFRU.